This is Paul. That's, Paul. That's how Paul preached to Gentiles. That's how Paul preached to strangers, aliens that did not know the man Jesus. Now, why would he do that? Because he wants the world to know they have sprang from the heart of God and they need to wake up and realize it. And that's why John 1 says, to as many as believe on his name, he gives them the right, the authority to call themselves the sons of God. So what happens? The moment we start to believe on Jesus, we start to realize who we are. And once we realize who we are, we get off the treadmill. We, we grow up into the responsibility of loving this world and taking care of our neighbor. And I believe we see the kingdom manifest on the earth. Do I have a New Testament scripture that helps with that revelation? I do. Second Peter chapter 1. I want to, I want to say this towards as I'm trying to close because I really did not intend to be on some of those points as long, but you helped me preach so well that I blame, I blame all of you. <laughs> Second Peter chapter 1. Now, I want you to recognize this is Peter, okay? Peter who walks with Jesus. And here's what he says in the first chapter in the 19th verse. Second Peter. And so, we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Look at that. The word has been spoken to you, and you would do well to heed it until what? Until the light comes up and shines on it in your heart. Get that. God's already said what he's going to say. All that we're waiting for is for the sun to rise in our heart. I get, I get so excited about this, this next moment. I'm really just trying to slow down and say this right so I don't fly through it in excitement. I told you to pay attention to who's writing. Peter. Peter has had revelation after revelation after revelation. All of them have ended in resolve and disaster. Peter is a microcosm of running the treadmill of religion. Lord, if everybody else forsakes you. I will not forsake you. Why? I've had a revelation. To whom else shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Both of those statements are Peter. To whom else shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Revelation. I will not forsake you. Everybody else can forsake you. I will not forsake you. Resolve. Peter warms his hand by charcoal fire. Hey, don't you belong to that man, Jesus? No, woman. I don't know him. <laughs> hey, I think I recognize your accent. Didn't you run around with Jesus? No, I told you. I don't know him. That's two times. Hey, I think I saw you one day at a healing. Weren't you with Jesus? Blank no, woman. The Bible says he curses. Blank no, woman. I don't know him. Man. Revelation. Resolve. Repentance. Jesus said to Peter, Peter, I know you got a good heart, buddy. But before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. On the third denial, Peter hears a rooster. I want to ask you a question. When does a rooster crow? When? When the sun comes up. When the sun comes up on Peter, it's a brand new day. He ends up going fishing and he meets Jesus next to another charcoal fire on the beach in John 21. He has another revelation of Jesus. Lord, you know I love you. Jesus says, then feed my lambs. What happens in Peter is he jumps off the treadmill of religion and by a charcoal fire, this time he receives. Yes. And what's happening in Peter is by the time he writes 2 Peter chapter 1, he goes, everything I ever needed was already spoken to me. I just needed to watch the sun rise on it in my heart. 
I think what he's saying is, everything I ever needed was already spoken into me by the man Christ Jesus. I just needed to hear the rooster crow to get me off the treadmill that was leading me down a road that wasn't going to be profitable to anybody. But the moment the sun rose in my life and the rooster crowed in my life, I realized I had a whole new chance on a a whole new lease on life. I have a whole new opportunity. And I don't have to run to please God. I've already pleased God. Even though I had just denied him three times, he still let the sun come up in my life. That's the kind of God I serve, and now you can call him daddy. Because it's not just a religion anymore. It's a relationship with the, with the man Christ Jesus, and he prefers you. He loves you. He dotes over you. You're in a relationship with him. He says, come on into the pantry and eat whatever you need, and don't you dare pull your wallet out and ask what you owe me. You don't owe me anything. This house belongs to you. This earth belongs to you. This place belongs to you. Now go out and act like it. Go out and keep keep this world tidy because it's yours. Go out and take care of your neighbor because they're yours. Go out and love them like I do. If you realized how much I'd love them, you'd stop making it about us versus them. You'd stop looking under every rock for who's lying to you. You'd stop trying to strike back every time you're hit. You'd look for the opportunity to carry the load two miles instead of one because your revelation wouldn't lead you to have to get there Sunday so you can get to an altar and repent. Your revelation would lead you to receive the good things of God so you could walk in relationship with the Father and you could take responsibility for the world around you. And my God, we can change the world if people will embrace that kind of revelation that the Son has come up on me and I'm a new creation in Christ. Amen.